Hey everyone, welcome to Venomore's channel this time around. With nominations rounding out and we're about to enter in our campaigning period, I thought I would pop on someone who has council experience to answer some of those basic questions we all have about government. So Venomore, we're going to start with some easy questions for you. And the basic is for anyone new to the Alluvium community, because sometimes we come in and we're just excited about the game. We don't know anything about crypto or to tokenomics or, or government outside of, you know, traditional senses. What is a DAO? Like, can you just give us a, a very brief, like, stupid, simple explanation? Well, a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization and all that essentially means is that there's no centralized entity at the very top that is running the show we are all any anyone that is participating in that dao is is basically a member of it um is a decentralized member um for something to be a dao i think it's the people that establish it have to be like based in different countries and things like this and that's one thing that's very cool about alluvium as a project uh is that it actually was established as a dao like from the very beginning and is grounded in that whereas many projects start off centralized and they try to transition to decentralized and that's actually where there's like weird like legal things that arise sometimes with that well whereas alluvium is very much grounded in decentralized fashion the way that we do that in alluvium is we basically vote in council members and that's just any ilv token holder can vote um it's also the square root of the amount of ilv that you have which is your voting power and the reason for that is if you're like this huge huge whale your 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 your, your vote is like diminished somewhat by that so, such that like smaller wallets can actually like have some impact compared to your voting power your, so your voting power is still huge but yeah let's say that you have like a hundred ilv what do you know offhand what your voting power would be 10 10 okay sometimes it helps people just have like a solid number to hang on to for example though if you have a quarter of an ilv token your voting power would actually be half a vote so double what it it actually is i think it's it's a very good system especially considering the fact that um and, and i know some people have also argued like why 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 don't people that have been longer in alluvium get additional say based on how long they've been staked or whatever the truth is the longer you've been in alluvium the more say you get anyway because you're getting more ilv it, i i have a lot more ilv today than year and a half nearly two years ago when i got into the project um because when i got in i i bought x amount and i've staked it and you're earning you know you'll be earning revenue distribution you'll be earning you know yield and that increases your voting power along the way as well well and i think one thing that gets confusing for new people coming in that is key to remember is your voting power is just to vote in council members and it's the council members who actually cast their votes that are making changes to the dow yeah which is essentially representative democracy and the logic behind that is it the average person within the dow they they're living their life they're invested in this project and we don't expect them to have to um study really deeply on every specific issue if they don't want to we do definitely invite people to do so and engage in governance and that's where we have these governance um discussions with the community in in the iip chat um but beyond that we have like five council members soon to be more in the governors v2 but um that ultimately basically are put in a position where they represent the people that have voted them into power and they basically just have more time allocated to spending on this as well as just generally um you know they, they've been voted in because they have some form of expertise and they represent a constituency within the community ultimately and hopefully form a well-rounded council um because it's it's very hard to make decisions via like a, a million people rather than just five people in a conversation you can kind of iron it out so what would you say makes an ideal council member like what are some good traits to look for in candidates as we're starting to approach the voting period the traits are definitely very um 
I would say borderline schizophrenic, just because <laughs> you need to, you need to legitimately be very robust and able to handle like some level of scrutiny and criticism because you're gonna get some flack if i'm honest but at the same time you need to be soft enough that like at the end of the day even though this person has criticized you you need to not take it personally and you need to be open if tomorrow they give you an idea you need to be open to that idea and you need to never close yourself off from the community because if you're somebody that takes shit personal and then like has like agree like like feels like you can like generate a uh, grievance with a specific person um even just in text because text is another thing like text generally text looks more offensive than than speaking to someone it's yeah, very totally. it's much harder to get offended if you're in a voice chat like we are right now compared to like in in just text that's why twitter's like can you can just descend into madness you know <laughs> So um, you, you, you need to have the flexibility and, and empathy to be able to go beyond somebody uh, just whether, whether they've said anything against you personally, or even if you just disagree with them to be able to actually take what they've said on board regardless. Um, and I, 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 I that takes, it's, it's, so it's you, uh, whilst also having like a thick skin, you also need to be able to let things through that thick skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, what was it? IIP 25 just passed. Um, and what that does is that implements blind voting into this next election. Uh, do you have any thoughts concerning like, did, I mean, did you, did you vote for it? <laughs> did you vote against it? Um, when you're voting, I mean, do you vote mainly on your own opinions and what you think will do well? Or do you sometimes vote against what you want in favor for what the community wants? So this time I took as far as i could see i think i voted what the community wanted but honestly like my reaction as soon as i finally saw this i was like yes finally <laughs> because i i submitted an iop for this exact same change probably like nearly a year ago at this point um more like six months ago maybe not sure but it was a while back and the reason why there was a like pushback on it is that like snapshot which is what we currently use for voting just doesn't offer that um, service, whereas now it does, uh, which is great. So I'm I'm a huge proponent of blind voting because in all the votes of the past, what we actually end up seeing is there's some weird shit that goes on with voting um, because you can check. There's nothing wrong with being able to change your vote, but if you can see who everyone else has voted for, suddenly you don't have a reason to vote for somebody that's in ninth place because you're like, my vote is wasted. And what we end up seeing as well is that the top six or seven positions having almost completely equal amount of votes with like 50 or 100 VILV difference between first place and like sixth or seventh place. And the reason we see that is people are constantly moving their votes. And then what happens in the last 30 minutes is, like, for example, if I'm a whale, and I don't want Vetamore to get into the council, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna vote, let's say I've got 200 VILV, which is huge, like insane. I just vote for Vetamore. That's what I would do. I'd vote for Vetamore and everyone would even out all the votes. And in the last 15 minutes, I changed my vote to someone else and he's pushed out of the council like that, like he just, just gone. He's gone. And that's one, suddenly one person can make a decision that alters the entire vote. And that, it shouldn't be that way. Also, like there's certain time, for, time zones. So like the majority of people weren't doing that. <laughs> so there's a very small minority of people that were aware of this um, situation and they could just manipulate the council and create it as they saw fit. And that's not right at the end of the day. Um, blind voting means you can vote for anyone, but you don't get to see who's voted for who and how many votes each person's getting until after the fact. And you can't do anything about it at that point. <laughs> so one thing that I've been seeing in chat that a lot of people keep asking um, is the idea behind like there's five members on the council. Each person in my mind will be filling a different role. You're going to have somebody who's finance oriented. You're going to have someone who's 
game development oriented possibly. You're going to have somebody who's community oriented. So it can be really hard to choose who you think is best overall if people are fitting one particular niche. And a lot of people have been suggesting is like, oh, well, why can't I vote for like my top five? And it's still a majority vote. Now, I, I totally understand that this is not an available feature within Snapshot. Is that right? To my so, knowledge, it's not. But also, one thing we did discuss back when mm -hmm. we were discussing blind voting, when I when when I think Daraji also was a big proponent of it, like in e eons past. Um, but like we 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 spoke about, even if it doesn't exist on Snapshot, we could just build our own voting system. And if we actually build our own voting system, we could potentially just license that out because we have really good devs. And honestly, Snapshot, you, you slow as shit. Like you thought how the fact okay. that it took you that long to develop that. But do you really want to be in, like, I feel like that pissed the community off. You're taking devs away from working on the game that everybody wants out to work on the governance system. Now I would agree with you. However, <laughs> however, what we have at the moment is we have blockchain devs mm -hmm. and those blockchain devs don't help make it, make a game, right? And also the, the game that we're building, we're not building it on the Ethereum blockchain and we're building it on the IMX blockchain. And the IMX blockchain, as to my knowledge, take this with at least a, like a pinch of salt, but like to my knowledge, it's incredibly easy to integrate uh, a game with the IMX blockchain, it's like, because not only have other games been made on it, but they, they assist you in the process. And it, mm -hmm. I don't know wh how or why, cause I'm not a dev, but apparently it requires very little, like from the actual devs that we have that could be doing something like this. That's why they made the forge. That's why they did the forge because they had the time because we're not going to fire our like blockchain devs because we need to have blockchain <laughs> devs sure. like on staff but like oh they can just make the forge while whilst they're not doing back end work on a on a mint or something you know um mm -hmm. so I think they are currently doing some work on Aluvitars and all that but um I'm sure that will be freed up somewhat soon and and until the game like further on I, I i think there's some room there for devs to create something like that otherwise i completely agree with your sentiment though end of the day um we shouldn't be disturbing the, and that's the other thing that people don't realize about the council is like why are you guys not pumping out iips like madmen and it's like at the end of the day every iip that we create is usually going to be some kind of a change that somebody on the team has to actually execute in some fashion or form and that is not always, but often going to decrease um, the productivity in other areas. Um, so any changes that are being made need to be so good that they're not just slightly better than what's currently available. They need to be so much better that they warrant time spent, the time that will be spent and that could be spent elsewhere, opportunity cost. Um, yeah. All right, thank you for that. Um, I'll <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know what else to say. Um, <laughs> I love so you. <laughs> you have been beneficial. Like you've had the opportunity to sit on multiple council terms, um, ranging from back when the council was only three months to now. This has been the first this epoch six with six months. Um, do you have a preference to which length you prefer? And do you feel like you've been like twice as productive being able to have more time to focus on things? I, ne I never thought about it that way, but <laughs> Epoch 6 is the first one that was six months. That There's some poetry <laughs> in there. Um, I like that. I actually like that. I, that's the first time I heard it when you said it out loud. Um, but um, <laughs> I much prefer six months. And not because I don't have to run again three months in and get reelected. No, I, I much prefer six months genuinely because... You actually, it, you have the time to really mature in the role. Um, whereas I remember the first epoch I was a part of. Um, yeah, like just three months I, as a brand new council member, as my first time on council, it's kind of overwhelming. There also wasn't a very like clear onboarding situation. Like nobody actually explains to you, oh, now that you're a council member, you must know these 10 things and be aware of them and keep to them. 
there was no orientation so it's you've got to find your own legs in in a sea of darkness if you will um since we have had daraji on board him alongside others um have also done a bunch of work in regards to creating better gov like onboarding for um new council members because mm -hmm. at the end of the day like it needs to be very clear the responsibility of, of a council member otherwise <laughs> Like, what's the point? Um, so speaking of that, what are the main responsibilities of a council member? Because that's another thing that keeps popping up in the Discord is no one actually knows what you guys do on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis. Yes, um, I I agree that, no, that everyone has a different opinion on this, um, which is why so many people come at things in a different way. That you, you, You'll get some responses that sort of make you go like, Oh, it feels like you just slapped me in the face, but it's like, oh no, you just have a different like thought process about what the hell my job description actually is than what I think my job description is, which fair enough. Like we, it's but like at the end of the day, um, the current job description is still vague, and that's why governance v two is coming. I hate that my response to a lot of things is now going to be gov v2 because <laughs> it's just so damn good and it's so damn clear that's why we've been working on gov v2 because it is so damn vague right now but as far as i'm concerned the current responsibilities of a council member um are essentially one to allow the team to create the product that they're working on to the best of their abilities and not disturb them or create like issues for them to have to deal with let's say it that way whilst at the same time being a voice of the community bringing up to council to be discussed things so th there's balancing there's a balancing taking place and that requires a, a council member's discernment uh which i i think is fair like some people argue are the council members being paid enough for the job that they are doing and i i would argue Yes, and like I think it's fair to receive five thousand dollars a month if you have the level of responsibility that a council member has, and also if we don't have a council, guys, and we devalue the council, is alluvium still a DAO? If alluvium isn't a DAO, we've got some big problems. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so let, let's explore that conversation of um, council member compensation real fast. Because, you yeah, know, as you're let's, right, let's that's, dive that's into continuously it. a huge uh, conversation. Now, me personally, I absolutely believe that council members should receive some form of pay. If anything, just because if, yeah, are people going to be elected onto the council still if there's no pay? Absolutely. Are they going to be motivated to get something done? No, not necessarily. You're going to have people who sit back and go like, well, I'm on the council. I got the cloud of it, but you're not paying me. Why am I putting in extra effort? So being paid for your time helps, you know, motivate you to actually get something done so that a you can show people that you've done something and possibly get reelected in future epochs. Um, I think one of the recent uh, suggestions that I saw that kind of got me to thinking, you know, why? Fi and especially since there's the conversation around um runway and if we're running out of runway if we should be doing some sort of another raise why five thousand why not say two thousand do you have uh, opinions around that in terms of how much council members should make if it's too much if it's the right amount i think considering that there are currently only five council members meaning that each council member has a very high amount of responsibility like 20 percent of the po voting power um like I, I don't think 5k is a large amount. Also, currently, when that's why there was a recent um, vote, and like we voted in to change. That's basically on the recommendation of the chief financial officer, Danny, um, that we change the payments so that they're not paid in USDC. So we're not actually using any runway to pay council members. We're just using an ILV, which anyway, like we're gonna be using for like fundraising. So it's just it's like why not pay them directly in ILV and we don't have to use um, dollars from so the runway. That, that's funny because it was not that long ago that it was swapped from being paid in ILV to being paid in USD. Yeah, so what's, what's very <laughs> funny there, I'm going to say the word funny, is 
that was just cheekily added in by somebody that I shall not name um, because they just didn't ask Danny. And we assumed that Danny had been asked and it just went through and it shouldn't have been. I'm gonna leave it there. It's just so, a clerical error. And almost okay. as soon as it happened, we immediately discussed in a, in a meeting, oh shit, like actually we need to change this back. And then we were like, well, we have six months until we get paid. So I guess we got six months to change that back around, but we're gonna be changed. Like, so we were, we were aware for a very long time that this change would happen before the end of the epoch. Um, so it, there's no, it's no harm, no foul. Um, so let's take that into consideration then, right? So you're passing IIPs and inevitably, especially if they're large ones. So for example, GovV2 is huge, a huge change. And if people come in and they're looking at the proposal for GovV2 or any other IIP and say that they agree with 80% of it, um, but they don't agree with the 20% and maybe they strongly don't agree with the 20%. Do you think in those cases that the IIP should be passed to benefit the 80% that they do agree with or denied and have that 20% fixed? So generally, the, the, the whole point of writing an IIP and then submitting it to the community is that the community can tear it a new asshole and then um, we can edit it based on community sentiment on all the specific points. So if 20% is genuinely like has a huge hole in it, it should be rewritten, not voted in. I, I believe in that. And that's exactly what happened with the forge. The forge was created. And then it, it, because there was 20% in there that was a huge hole <laughs> we were like nah that's not gonna fly then you know fair enough for, for those who maybe don't remember can you give a quick recap on the forge and what the issues brought up were yeah so the forge there there was essentially a vehicle created that um el el eluvium st uh, those that were seed investors and team uh, that have locked tokens because they have locked tokens for like a year that were unlocking gradually uh, as well as the like higher up admin team they have like tokens locked for three years they could sell locked tokens to people publicly um in each and but whoever buys that to those tokens publicly they in it also have to end up locking them up for one to three years depending on what they choose at a discounted cost the hole in the the whole situation was the fact that the fact that it was possible even though i don't think the te the team would have ever done this but technically any team member that isn't an admin could have just legit gone i kind of just don't want to do this anymore sell 100 of their um ilv state like holdings and then just be like well i have nothing keeping me here Bye bye. So like, it's kind of like, that's the point of a lockup structure and, and, and incentive structure like that, um, which I think is fair. Uh, but then on top of that, technically, like somebody like Kieran, who's at the top and has these tokens locked for three years, he could suddenly also sell tokens locked for three years. Um, and it, 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 that was the hole in it, ultimately. Um, we were going to edit it to, like just disclude uh team and maybe allow just n like normal team members just to be able to sell like x up like percentage of their um amount and the whole point of it was to decrease the amount of um selling on on token unlocks so that like if if you're a if you're a seed investor and you just need to take some liquidity and bit of profit you don't have to dump it on the market in order to do so. You can do it OTC mm. over the counter um, and uh, without changing the token price. But then the reason w it wasn't changed and we kind of just left it is that token unlocks happened. Like they happened because it this all happened too close to token unlocks. There wasn't enough time to change it. So by the time we changed it, token selling was already happening and there was kind of no point. And we sort of said, we're going to just keep this mechanism in reserve for when we do finally come to the point where we want to make a public raise using the treasury funds um, and sell ILV in that way. Awesome, thank you for that recap. Um, also, I really wanted to touch back on GovB2 
because from yeah. everything that we hear, that was pretty much the main IIP that you guys have been working on for the past six months. Now, I know that it's still coming out. I know that you guys are still working on it, but can you give us a little bit of details into what we can expect to see in GovV2 and maybe some of your favorite features that you're looking forward to? And if you uh, can't, that's fine. No, no, I, I, I honestly, like, I, I don't think it's actually like a secret and we're honestly gonna be releasing it Hopefully in the next week, we're also planning to release alongside it a video explanation from myself, uh, Doraji and Anna Mositas, um, Annie Knows. Um, just who because- Who is also running for council. Who is also running for council, as is Doraji. Um, <laughs> and the reason we're doing that this time is because I, f I found that reading through Gov V2, like, uh, like, if I was a new person reading it, I'd have a ton of questions, but then every time I have a conversation with other people about it, it's like a lot more clear, um, like the reasoning behind certain things. And I found that with a lot of things in Alluvium, by the way, like you write something, but then you hear Kieran explain it. And it's, you know, that you suddenly get the context and the, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the the reasoning behind it, and it's more of a complete package. So we're gonna do a video explanation explaining it so that people can also get that more like verbal, like feeling of it, which so I think where, changes So where is that things. gonna be published? That would also be in the IIP uh, chat. Okay. Cause that was the one thing I think finding any information on government, whether it's how council members work, uh, how people are voted in, how things are nominated is so hard. I spent, probably two, I mean, you remember, I spent two months last epoch interviewing you and trying to understand the minute details of how it worked. And honestly, it kind of pisses me off how hard it is to find some of that information when you're new, you don't necessarily know anybody in the discord, it's uncomfortable to ask questions. Like, have you guys thought at all about like, so we have the Alluvium YouTube channel, we have Alluvium Plus. Have you guys thought about creating essentially an Alluvium government section of that where you can post basic information of here's how to vote, here's how to nominate, here is the explanation of how to become a council member and what their responsibilities are? Yeah, so I would, I, I've i actually been um, asking for things like this since I, I joined Alluvium like from day one. That's what's legit why I started my YouTube channel because I was like, this is completely missing and it's required. Um, some <laughs> like, it took me two weeks to figure out all of Alluvium's tokenomics. And I think I still found out new things a bit later. Um, and I put that all in one video because I was like, this is actually not that hard to explain in one concise 20 minute or 15 minute um, just, like, pitch um but like there isn't that doesn't exist currently in alluvium and there there isn't those got like i asked tsg like why don't we make a set alluvium plus for everything alluvium but like a separate youtube channel for alluvium governance just for the governance stuff i don't know why but tsg seems to think it should all be in alluvium plus i think it's a disservice to governance personally i think there should be a separate governance channel um with you know potentially even like some of the like all the town hall meetings on there um certainly any I, I think we should have more like public council meetings let's call them or like like what about having like some council occasional town halls right yeah like so, a we, so the problem is we've had council town halls and what ends up happening is um the council members say very little in those because everyone has questions for kieran um so <laughs> fair enough fair enough maybe like a council town hall where Excluding kieran isn't present kieran. yeah like potentially so that because people will always prefer to hear kieran's word on any topic uh compared to a council member and i don't disagree with that because i would also like to hear kieran's word more well, here's a suggestion since you are on council and you can maybe push this towards TSG. If even if you're putting everything on Alluvium Plus, just splitting the stuff into identifiable playlists. Playlists. So yeah. you can just send it to someone say, hey, you want to know everything government? Here are all the videos so you don't have to go combing through because there is so much information on Alluvium Plus. And sometimes because, you know, I, TSG is an influencer. He likes to market. So does Andrew the titles are more marketing based than informative and yeah. you don't necessarily know what you're getting into. And so having clear and concise titles 
might be helpful. There, there's my suggestion because Ooh, so I wish it was easier to educate on governance. I, I, I agree entirely. And I also think they should be very clear, like written explanations. Mm -hmm. uh, I, know, I know people send you to the Medium articles. I've personally, take this as you will, as a council <laughs> member, I have not read all the Medium articles. I actually started reading the Medium articles when I first joined Alluvium and it was so stale, not to mention there are genuinely outdated, there's outdated information in there as far as I'm concerned. So all I did was I just asked questions in the Discord. I remember Ra Lord, Sasha, um, Arash, all of the old school OGs back in the day when I joined, they were just, I was just pestering them all day long. And then what I next did was I would just, then answer other people's questions coming in that were mm -hmm. brand new so that I could like see if I'd actually figured it out. And often what would happen is <laughs> Sasha would be like, nah, mate, that's not right. And that's how I learned. I just did that eight hours a day for two weeks. And then eventually Sasha's like not telling me off for everything I say, and I'm actually answering appropriately. So I, like, I, I think that is the best way to learn something like this is to engage in it. But I'm, I don't think that's, that should be required. That's that is so broken. That is broken. That, that, is, that beyond is beyond broken. a broken way to learn about that, the governance. That, that is a broken way to have to learn. And and with them, I agree. with them posting their new <laughs> news outlet and transferring all their articles to Medium, there should be a yeah. better way to organize what you're looking for because the same issue is on the Medium article. Sorry, yeah. I'm. <laughs> if you can't tell, I've been a little pissed about this <laughs> at how freaking hard it is to get the answers I want without feeling like I have to pester because I I mean I broke down and I pestered you for about two months straight on my questions but it's it's uncomfortable I to also do that. want to say that it, if you're if you've ever had a question for a council member and you were like I, I kind of don't want to pester them guys please do the council members are there to connect to the community with you'll also be shocked at how few people actually <laughs> try to find out find out about governance so anyone that is interested to find out we are always happy to help as i believe is many community members but there are also some people that will just you know it's it's a community we have all kinds of people there's people that are gonna maybe talk down to you or whatever it's annoying it's not it's unfortunate but also beyond that, in GovV2, another thing that is going to be required to manage the larger structure of it is a dedicated um, governance manager. Because currently, governance is being managed by Rich, and Rich has done an amazing job, genuinely. However, he also is the community manager and has multiple other roles in Alluvium. So... I, like, I think the dedicated um, governance manager will also be able to push a lot of this type of stuff as well um, to, to have these like, it's not that hard to create these clean explainer like texts as well as videos. I, I, I think governance can be made incredibly easy to onboard, but there just needs to be people to put the time into it. And the priority in Alluvium, um, like, from the team side has been making a quality product and mm -hmm. um governance has sort of been left to council members to do as much as they can with it but they can only do so much because nothing can can be done without the team so well um, speaking yeah. speaking of that for anyone who's watching who is interested in governance for this epoch and hopefully futures link to my channel yes i'm gonna plug on your channel the link to my channel should be in the description below there is a video on how to nominate there's a video going to be a video on how to vote and there will be a video going into the details of everything governance it should be dropping in the next few days so if you're looking to be educated head on over to artemis alluvium and crypto link below <laughs> definitely head over guys amazing channel um, and that's actually all the questions I had for you today. We're ending with my pitch of my channel on your channel. So my channel on your channel. <laughs> Channelception. I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, thank you for interviewing me all these questions. And a little birdie told me that you're also running. Um, <laughs> how's how, <laughs> uh, how did you come to that decision? 
Uh, oh, so it's funny. I uh, originally had absolutely no intention of running. And actually, I, I dropped my how to nominate video and someone mentioned in the comments, oh, are you up to being nominated? And I was like, nope, absolutely not. You know, and then there's these these two people who like to push me to do things that I'm uncomfortable with. And their names are Venomore and TSG. <laughs> and uh, I mean, luckily for them, it doesn't take too much of a push. It's like, you should do this. No, I don't think I want to do this four hours later of thinking about it. Oh, okay, fine. I'll do this. I don't want to, but I'll do it. And I mean, not wanting to is more coming from a place of like, I'm still learning how to put myself out to the community. Same thing with my content creating. I did not set out to do content creating. I did it to earn a quick buck from Kieran's land sale you know, competition that he did and enjoyed it and kind of have been bulldozing through ever since. And this community just sucks you in, really. It and does. <laughs> <laughs> I start researching and trying to figure out as much as I can, whether it be about the game or the governance. And it's a big old rabbit hole. And then I get annoyed that I can't find the exact questions that I have. So I make the videos to answer those questions. And I have a short amount of time that I can watch videos. So I, I love your channel, but sometimes your videos, <laughs> TSG videos, Scoriox, even you guys have like 40 minute videos. I don't have 40 minutes to sit. So if I can make a five minute version that gives you all the details and highlights you want, I'm going to do that. So yes, I am running. I am running and my goal is essentially to be the communicator between the community and the council members because I've been so frustrated with how inaccessible it feels um, even if that is not the case. Um, so whether that's being more active in the chat and answering direct questions, um, that's my goal on the council is bringing your ideas to fruition. Because there's so many people who have ideas and don't know how to get into IIP form. And we don't have a method of saying, hey, you have an idea, fill out this form, and then you know this council member will help you go over it. You know, We kind of need a mentorship program for people who want to see their ideas realized. So that that is my full goal for the next epoch. Should I be elected as council? I love Vote that. Vote for Artie. Vote Artie, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for asking me all those questions and for pitching yourself. I <laughs> do want to bring you on to ask you a few more questions on how you feel on different topics as well. Um, Cause I think you'd make an amazing council member. <laughs> and I think that what, like the place where you come from is also just, you're just pure. Like you, 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 you keep it real. You don't bullshit. You don't beat around the bush. And, and like, that's, that's what it's all about. Um, integrity, honor, <laughs> and truth. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> so, Artie, that's all the reasons right there. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>